What if we wanted to go even further and really add some fake 3D elements, right? Surely we can't do that with just shapes and layer styles, right? Let's put that to the test. Let's make a really nice notes icon. So we'll just get started with the pen tool here and create a base shape that we can work from. Uh, maybe uh, we'll sort of just kind of create something like this. I'll add some notes. Uh, we'll add another one here just to give it a little swing. Uh, maybe one down here. Kind of, I kind of just want you know that part of the paper to look like it's like peeling off the page. We also want another shape just immediately underneath it, which should be sort of like the layer that we can apply some shadow detail to. And so for the peeling part, we probably want some other color that we can easily change and edit. Um, for the layer underneath, we kind of want like an even darker version of that. Um, and we're just gonna add some effects to this, right? You, you start to see the outlines of this thing, but it looks kind of flat and weird, doesn't really sell the whole concept of 3D, right? So again, layer styles to the rescue, add some shadow that's coming from underneath that peeled part of the paper. Um, so that's simply just a gradient overlay right there. And then we add the good old noise, because I want the whole piece to have that paper texture. For the peeling part of the paper, we're gonna add a couple of effects. First of all, we need a gradient to really sell the depth of this thing. So just kind of adding in uh, a basic overlay gradient. Um, you can study it right here. What I would also like is for this peel to feel kind of thicker, like it has just a little bit of volume. And uh, one easy way to do that is to add a small highlight from the top, mimicking light, hitting that imaginary edge. And we do that with inner shadow in this case. I also want the page peel to drop a shadow immediately underneath. Now this is looking pretty good, but I think we can push it even further. And for this, I think we need another quick tip. Welcome to Michael's guide for point lights and point shadows in Photoshop. So we've looked at using various forms of gradients to create lighting and shadow conditions, but sometimes you want even finer control than what gradients are able to give you. Here's what I do in those conditions. You're gonna come down here and just add a new layer. Go up here and choose the brush tool or simply just hit B. Here's another quick tip for you. Can we do a quick tip inside a quick tip? Quick tip -ception? I think so, let's try it. When you wanna paint something with the brush in Photoshop and you have to change brush sizes, you usually have to come all the way up here, go down here and change some of these settings here to change the size of the actual brush. No more! Holding down Control and Option and left clicking and dragging your mouse horizontally across the screen, you can change the diameter of the brush. And if you drag up and down, you'll change the hardness of the brush. Back to the other quick tip. So using the brush tool in this layer that we created before, we just want to click a single time. And what I usually do is I convert this to a smart object. And so now we kind of have like this light that we can move around. And also it doesn't have to be a completely symmetrical point light. You can just hit command T and while holding down shift, we're then allowed to do these odd sized transformations. And uh, we can create like a, a really like long stroke of light, for example. And we can use that in a pretty flexible way to add light to this scene. And that's exactly what I've done with this fold. Cool, okay, that's a page peel. You didn't think I'd sort of just write you guys off with the page peel, right? No, let's add a cool object to this. So a pencil, just like any other object, consists of a few base layers. And so I'll go up here, I'll choose a uh, rounded rectangle, sort of try to get uh, the, uh, the composition right. I kind of want the pencil to be juxtapositioned on top of the whole icon. What we can then do is we can just sort of start to draw in the basic components that we need. So we know that we want a body of the pencil. We probably need like a tip for the pencil. And I'm just applying like some base colors for now. It's like a very crude drawing of a pencil, right? I'm not gonna bore you with me just drawing out all these vector shapes. But when you're done, you might have something like this. Let's start to apply some layer styles to this thing and see if we can really make it pop off the page, make it feel like a, like a real object resting on this notepad. First of all, let's apply a good old shadow to the whole thing, uh, made exactly the same way as you've seen me do before. Already that helps, helps the whole thing pop out a little bit. We're gonna start down here by the tip of the pencil because I really wanna show you one other trick that I, I use quite often, and that is applying textures and masking them onto these base shape layers. And in this case, I have this picture of some plywood, which I've just dragged into Photoshop, turned it into a smart object, and uh, masked it onto this base shape layer here. 
I'm using the blending mode soft light. Could have been an overlay as well if I wanted the, the effect to be a little less subtle. We're going to go with soft light. And as usual, we're using good old layer styles to help us with the illusion of 3D. We've got a little bit of an inner shadow here. Uh, we've got an inner glow. And we've got a gradient overlay, uh, which is being used to create this highlight here in the middle. That's pretty much it. Okay, moving on up to the actual body of the pencil. Pretty simple stuff. The uh, inner shadow and the gradient overlay is just there to create this illusion of roundness, really. But of course, another hallmark of a, of a good classic pencil is sort of these angled edges. And so the way that I've done them in this case is actually to divide the body up into three sub shapes. I'm just going to apply them right here. There you go. Individually, they're just smaller shape layers clipped onto this base shape with, uh, with some effects applied. You have a little gradient here and then we have this middle shape here which needed to be pretty prominent and uh, i'm using a combination of gradients to sort of create the illusion of light hitting that angled surface right and so if i click these on and off you, you'll sort of get the sense that oh it's it's actually angled when really it's not just a shape also Good old bevel and emboss, like the boss, casting a little highlight overlay. Moving on up to this metal band across the, the top of the pencil here. You probably guessed it. We're going to do this with gradients. A bevel and emboss as the top highlight. A, uh, a gradient overlay, which is, of course, where the magic happens. You have a bunch of different color stops. And together, they magically create this illusion of light hitting a metallic surface. The eraser at the end of, uh, of the pencil. And uh, again, we're just uh, applying some very basic layer styling, a little bit of, of inner glow and inner shadow to create that dimensionality we've been talking about. A little bit of light using the point light method that I showed you before, and then just some noise to, uh, to really sell you on this idea of it being textured. And there you have it. That's a, a pencil that looks kind of 3D to me with literally just a few shape layers and some layer styles. We bend light and we create any material. Side note. It's kind of funny and full circle that one of the very first app icons I ever designed in Photoshop was a notes app icon, like living as a student in my apartment in Copenhagen and making ends meet. And now, 15 years later, I'm teaching you how to make that very same thing. I think that's pretty cool.